What's going on, FG fam? Welcome to another episode of the Detroit Tigers franchise here on MLB The Show 20. Now, even though this series is coming to a close eventually, there's still a few episodes left, so let's get through this. We are going to get through another simulation season here today as we need to find a new manager. Hopefully, Takichi, I guess that's how his name is pronounced, uh, will sign with us as manager. Sir Anthony Dominguez, we want to bring him back. He's like one of the few free agents we need. Freddie Freeman, maybe he'll be cheap this year. $4 million? Possibly we could bring him back for that. Kendall Brown is the one looking for money this time. At 28 years old, he's an 83 overall. We're, we're going to offer him some money, try to bring him back, but who knows if he'll stay with us or go somewhere else to cheeky goes to the royals so we got to try to bring in carl turner as manager and you can see some of the free agent signings going on here peterson the first one to fall kendall brown goes to the angels carson kelly is getting acquired by the mets from the yankees very rare those two teams would trade tyler frick signs with the angels so he will go play with kendall brown Adrian Morahone signed by the Marlins. KJ Harrison becomes a Detroit Tiger. He will be playing first base. Tim Kate as starting pitcher with the Phillies now. JJ Blade going to the Red Sox. Carlos Correa becomes a Royal. Talk about all time things you didn't expect to happen for a thousand, Alex. And Sir Anthony Dominguez declines our offer. He's going to become a Cincinnati Red. Nick Madrigal is an A. Gabriel Moreno is a giant. Tariq Skubal is a Ranger. And a lot of other signings. The Rangers make a signing at catcher with Alex Jackson. Make sure you guys drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel at all for the love of franchise sports because that is what we do here. Casey Mize also going to the Rangers. So the Rangers making a lot of additions. And who knows, they already were a team that knocked us out of the playoffs a couple of times. Maybe they will again. Spencer Howard going to the Pirates. They actually make a signing. The Mets get J.B. Bugowskis. Austin Allen becomes a Mariner. Brady Singer becomes a Dodger. Phil Matan becomes a Miami Marlin. And Ryan Schaefer, we have to offer him arbitration. He made $70,000. We'll give him half a mil. Why not? David Tao, another guy who made $70,000. I'll give him $200,000. Why not? And at third base, Alec Bohm. Made $7.2 million on arbitration last year. We'll go seven and a half. see if that's enough. Tommy Pace, another guy on arbitration. He's going to make over $7 million, that's for sure. And William Bunty, just going to go just shy of $4 million, see if that works. James Watton gets signed by the Rockies away from the Nationals. He's got a six-year deal. That is one of the custom prospects you guys made. So there we go, James Watton. We're going to start to see those guys get a little older and start to move around. Alex Kirilov joins Watton over in Colorado. Kyle Isbell also switching teams. We're going to be dumping Freddie Freeman. We no longer need him now that we have KJ Harrison. So we make a trade there. Trent Grisham is acquired by the Mariners and Irving Lopez signs there. So maybe the Mariners will be a bit better. Machado becomes a national. Randy Rosarena becomes an A. Jeremy Pena to the Braves. Luis Garcia is joining up with our Tigers at shortstop. He had 17 home runs last year. Hopefully he can do more of that for us. Jacob Amaya is joining a new team. Bryson Stott. Garrett Hampson becomes a Padre. Ahmed Rosario joins him with the Padres. Ryan Burke becomes an Astro. Justin Dean is moving teams as well. And we go to the Rule 5 Draft. Cole Shackelford gets picked up in the Rule 5 draft. So does Gustavo Pla. Cole Shackelford goes back over to the Indians where we took him from. Trey Mullins becomes a Yankee. I believe a lot of these guys are your prospects. Zane Anderson to the Nationals. Gustavo Pla becomes a Met. Shamond Hawkins is coming off of our squad and going to the Arizona Diamondbacks. So we lose a few guys in the Rule 5 draft. I would have liked to keep Shimon Hawkins. I think he could have been a very nice Tiger, but 
we just continue to get stars and in our outfield and Mookie Betts is going to go to the Cardinals now Logan Davidson's no longer needed because we got Luis Garcia so we're going to dump Logan Davidson and look at this an a potential shortstop from the Pirates that's too good to pass up so we're going to take that Drew Jackson finds a new team as a shortstop so does Nico Horner the shortstop starting to fall off the board Nolan Arenado is going to join the Atlanta Braves on a one-year 5.9 million dollar deal Tommy Pace is going to get seven million with his arbitration sided with us so we win that Alec Bohm they also side with us so we're going to be paying him seven and a half mil that's not bad. I'm okay with increasing the salary in arbitration. Just didn't want it to go up too much. They side with Schaefer, though. He's going to make $1.5 million thanks to his arbitration. And David Tao is going to make $785,000 instead of the, what was it, $200,000 I offered him. So we move on through spring training here, and a 17 and 10 team, 18 and 11 at the end of spring training, not too bad. Let's go ahead and sim through the regular season. Starting off, not that good, but does our team ever start off good in simulation in April? Usually not. So 11 and 10, kind of that 500-ish team. We'll see what ends up happening as we continue to go on through. A lot of injuries happening within the organization already in April, and that's a little unlucky. But we're hovering around that 500 range right now. Brian Gonzalez gets hurt. 16 and 15 is the record, but we sweep the Yankees. Lose game one to the Orioles. I mean, that's something that we would do, you know? That's just how our team does what it does. I have no idea why, but Cattell Marte now gets healthy. We sweep the uh, Colorado Rockies. We sweep the Arizona Diamondbacks. Richie McGowan just got healthy again, so he was obviously out for a little bit. And we've got some more injuries in the organization. We do take the series against the Yankees at the end of the month. And now looking at how we did in the draft, we got an 89 potential and a 90 potential player. But they're a long ways away from coming up to the majors. Malcolm Hollis, a 63 overall, but only a C potential guy. Same with Lee MacArthur, only a C potential, and J.J. Pickett, 67 overall, but a C potential. So hopefully those guys will become a little bit better than they look like they'll be, but probably not going to come up in time to really bring us to any sort of World Series. Most of the time, they'll probably be trade chips so that we could get established talent and try to win one in one of these sims. We're 41 and 26 at that point, and that's not actually too bad. I thought we would be worse than that, but Lindor just got hurt for two to three months, and that is going to be really hard to overcome. Lindor, obviously a big part of the team, but he is gone. We have Logan Davidson on the team, though. He's going to have to take over. But he was not our full-time starting. Oh, no, Logan Davidson we traded. My bad. It is Luis Garcia who was now our backup shortstop to Francisco Lindor. So we had both of them playing as one, I believe, as a DH and one at short. But now we're not able to do that. So somebody else has to play the DH. AL defeats the NL in the All-Star game. So that'll determine home field advantage for the World Series. It'll be the Nat a American League. Can we get to the damn World Series, though? That's like the real issue. We need to get there if we want the home field advantage. Now the Twins came close to sweeping the Twins there. Akil Badu is acquired uh, from the Diamondbacks to the Braves for a couple of prospects. Came close to sweeping the Twins. We fall a game short there. We two-game sweep the Milwaukee Brewers. Shed Long gets acquired by the Pirates for Deshaun Knowles and Rymel Tapia. Miguel Sano is acquired from the Twins by the Mets for three old men. So hopefully that makes the Twins worse. We'll see. Richie Griffin sustained an injury, which isn't good because I believe he is a full-time starter right now. I'm not really sure. James Watton gets traded to the Giants after the Rockies just picked him up. They get Miguel Andujar and Shervin Newton back. So hopefully that's worth it for the Rockies, but uh, Walty's guy is getting passed around like a two-bit whore at the moment. Richie Griffin back 
from his injury. Matt Manning gets acquired from the Phillies, or from the Indians to the Phillies. Franklin Barreto is getting traded for by the Orioles. They give up three guys, including DJ Stort. And we continue the simulation. 64 wins at this point. We're getting pretty darn close to the nitty-gritty here where it's starting to get to the minor league playoff race. And we'll see how that ends up working out for our minor league squads as it is very, very important for them to uh, do well. I'd like to maybe, perhaps get an organizational sweep of championships at some point if we can. Percy Williamson gets hurt. 75, now Floyd Bullard has an injury as well. The minor leagues seem to be becoming a mash unit. Lindor just came back at the end of August here, so that is good for us. Hopefully that can propel us to exactly what we need it to. They're gonna fix the pitching staff and all that, don't care. Carlos Torres out for one to two weeks. Coming down to this race for the minor leagues. We'll see how they did. Esparza comes back. We have 81 wins. That's pretty good. Torres now is able to come back. That's good. And the Mud Hens are going to make it as a wild card. They'll be playing the Iron Pigs in the first round of the minor league postseason. So good for the Mud Hens. The Sea Wolves win their division. They'll be taking on the Senators. They go 80 and 60. So, minor league playoffs ready to begin. Let's flip over, take a look, see how these go. Harrisburg, Lehigh Valley, we get wins there. Ooh, looks like the Mud Hens are going to get through, hopefully, unless they screw up. Good, they get the sweep. There we go. They move on to the International League Championship Series. Now, let's see if the Erie Seawolves can get through, and they do. So, they'll be in the Eastern League Championship against the Hartford Yard Goats. And the Mud Hens playing the Columbus Clippers. And starting out on the road, they get a win. Both teams get a win. There is a win for the Mud Hens, but the Sea Wolves lose. Mud Hens sweep it. They're going to be in the AAA Natty against either the Dodgers or the Tacoma Rainiers. So we'll see how that goes. Erie, however, gets taken out of the Eastern League Championship Series. That's not good. We didn't want that to happen. But let's see how the AAA Natty goes. It is the Tacoma Rainiers. And the Rainiers get the win. The Bear Bear win. Two to three. We lose. So an opportunity there. But the Tigers have won over 90 games. That should be good enough to get them in the postseason. 94 wins. And they will be taking on the Rangers as the AL Central champions. So we're taking on the Rangers in the DS. Let's see what ends up happening in this one. So looking at the standings, the Rays win 100 games. Blue Jays and Red Sox become the wild card teams. Tigers is 94 wins. We blew away the division. Blue Jays, Red Sox will play each other. The Marlins win the East. The Cubs win the Central. Reds get a wild card spot with 93 wins. Padres win the West. And the Giants with James Watton will get the other wild card spot in the National League. So the Reds and the Giants will play each other. Let's see how we do against the Texas Rangers in this first round postseason. Ooh, this is not going well. Can we make a comeback? Can we win it in five as we force a game five? And I don't know what we're doing there. All right, we're managing this game. Mario Corona, solo shot for Oscar Mercado. He was torturous as an Indian and he does it again and then Apostle with a three run shot Texas up 4 nothing already this is not looking good and we just can't get anything going against Casey Mize the former Tiger talk about the storylines in this one as Casey Mize is doing it against us then Mario Corona just really just becoming too easy to hit we get David Tao in the game in the third inning he continues into the fourth inning, doing a pretty good job here, but then giving up a stolen base after a single, and he's able to get out of the inning anyway, which is good. David Tao remains in there. We're going to take him out now for Otto Shipley in the top of the six, and Shipley just gives up a couple and then puts more guys on base. Samuel Santiago comes in, gets us out of it. 
but Casey Mize is still in there for them, and he hasn't given up more anything. He hasn't given up anything. He's given up three hits on the day. And two-run shot for Blake Swihart, and that gives them an 8-0 lead. There is just no hope that we can make a comeback in this one. Luke Farrell has been very good for them in relief of Casey Mize, and we are just... We're done. Nine to one. We'd have to have the biggest bottom of the ninth ever. We get a solo shot from Luis Garcia. We get a walk from Lindor, but that is about it. Nine to two. The Texas Rangers have taken us out of the postseason yet again. They have done this multiple times now, and it is just disheartening to see us lose out again. As we continue on through the playoffs, Texas ends up getting taken out by the Blue Jays. It is the Blue Jays and the Padres in the World Series. Blue Jays going for the sweep. They don't get it, but they do win in five games. So the Blue Jays are your 2028 World Series champions. And World Series MVP is Odell Hammonds who was 318 with three homers and three ribbies throughout the World Series. All solo shots, quite obviously. The MVP, postseason MVP, Vladdy Jr. with seven homers, ten ribbies. Acuna's on that team also. What a crazy team. T Terso Ornelas is the postseason MVP for the National League with the Padres. MVP in the American League, J.J. Blade. Jordan Alvarez was up there. MVP for the National League was Louis Robert with Austin Meadows and Willie Calhoun behind that. Cy Young, Adrian Morajon for the Marlins. Casey Mize wins the fucking Cy Young. Unbelievable for the Rangers. Luis Patino was up there for our Tigers, but a 420 ERA. That's wild. Batting title goes to Andrew Benatendi with a 341 average. Austin Meadows with a 316 in the National League Reliever of the Year. Harry Villalobos had 59 saves for the Cubs. He gets it. Class A had 49. Matsuzaka had 41 in a better ERA, but less strikeouts. So Class A gets it. Another former Tiger winning an award. Mauricio Ramiro wins Rookie of the Year. Mike Davis in the NL. Hank Aaron Award goes to Mazzara and Jordan Alvarez. Gold Glove Pitcher goes to Danny McGrath. Louis Patino was right there for it. Kyle Wright gets it in the National League. Gold Glove Catchers. Here's your Gold Glove first baseman. Do we win anything? Gold Glove second base. Franklin Barreto gets one. Yoan Moncada. Joe Rizzo gets a third base Gold Glove. Corey Seager at short. Kyle Tucker at left field for the American League. Josh Rojas, another former Tiger. He gets second place. Kendall Brown got third place. Another former Tiger. A lot of guys up for awards. Here's the Gold Glove center field. Pache comes in second place. Unfortunately, he couldn't win it. Gold Glove right field. Silver Slugger pitcher. Silver Slugger DH is Luis Garcia. He had a 302, 33 homer, 108 RBI year. That's really good. Silver Slugger pitcher was Jarrell Cotton. Catcher, Adley Rushman comes in third with a 286 average and 15 homers, but he didn't get over 20. That's probably why he wasn't picked. Silver Slugger first base was KJ Harrison, so there's a Tiger winning it. Uh, Glaber Torres at second base for the Angels. Alec Bohm gets a Silver Slugger for us. 38 bombs he hit. Miguel Sano wins one. Carlos Correa at shortstop. Outfield, there's Richie McGowan with one, a 326 average, 39 homers, and 110 ribbies. Richie McGowan, what a five-tool player. You'd love to see it from him. So now we're going to take a look at the retired players, see if uh, any of you guys ended up retiring or anybody important. Mike Trout retires at the age of 37. Uh, the New Jersey native, fellow Jerseyan, and he retires with... Not quite 600 homers, but a lot. 576 home runs. He ends up not 3,000 hits, and he does get over a 300 average. So no doubt he'll be a Hall of Famer for sure with that many homers, that many ribbies, and that good of an average. But his hit numbers, not as high as I would have thought they would have been, but still a very good career. 4A1 Mike Trout. Tommy Pham retires. I know that's our boy Hobie's favorite player in the league. 
Uh, let's continue here. We got Vargas. Yaziel Puig retires. There's a good one. Continuing, Jose Altuve. I didn't take a look at him, but, you know, I didn't actually see him, I think, at the time of recording this. Michael Brantley retires as well. Araldis Chapman retires with 426 saves. A career ERA of 296, a whip of 116. Mike Clevenger retires. CJ Cron Crone retires. Former Tiger to start off this series. Nico Goodrum, another former Tiger, retiring. He played one year without us in Cincinnati before finally hanging up the cleats. Ismani Grandal retires. Travis Jankowski, what else do we have here? Larkin, Lugo, Seth Lugo, Trey Mancini retires with 266 career bombs. Former Tiger for one year of his career, he hit 16 homers. The least homers he ever hit in his career was as a Tiger. He did get hurt for us, I believe, so that kind of skews the numbers a bit. Carlos Martinez, there's another former Tiger. He went on to the Red Sox after us, but career 366 ERA. He had it over four for us a couple of times. Steven Matz retires. Whit Merrifield retires, and he was most recently was with us. He only had a couple bombs for us, though. Uh, Austin Nola, O'Keefe, who else is there? Salvador Perez, Wilson Ramos, another former Tiger. Anthony Rizzo retiring as well. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton. How many home runs did, was he able to hit in his career? Oof, 545. We'll see if he makes it to the hall. Marcus Stroman retiring as well. Jacob DeGrom with a career 307. He was 167 and 123. Not bad himself. We'll see. I don't know if he'll make the hall. Let's find out. Mike Trout, Jose Altuve, who ended with 258 career homers. Only 2,500 hits, but that was enough to get him in with a 303 average. And Stanton with a 271 career average, 545 he hit. 2332 hits, so not a lot of hits for Stanton. So three Hall of Famers. That brings us to another offseason where we have a lot of big guys potentially leaving. So let me know what you think of this season in the comments section below. We have two giant episodes coming your way to end this series. So next week will be a giant episode of probably around 30 minutes and the same for the week after that. So I hope you're excited. If you are and you're a big fan of the series, let me know in the comments section below. Drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content. It's what we do. Somehow